Hello, how's it going? Welcome back to some more F1 22 and another part of our career mode with uh, within the My Team um, mode with Braun GP. Today we are taking on the Monaco Grand Prix and of course we are going to be able to uh, upgrade the car which I'm looking forward to and hopefully we'll be able to get uh, some stuff on the, the, the car. Not necessarily for this weekend but for the, the coming weekend in Baku and uh, this race obviously Monaco it's a one-off in the season really and uh, with that in mind I kind of don't want to do 39 laps around Monaco I'm not going to lie uh, so uh, we will be doing a 25% race around here uh, mainly because there's not going to be many overtaking opportunities that sort of thing so I don't really think we're taking too much away from the action by doing that. So I hope, hope that's all right. Hopefully uh, that makes sense. And of course, we will be back to 50% races for Baku until the end of the season. Uh, that's certainly the plan. And then we'll review it going forward for season two. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for the support so far. I really do appreciate it. We are going to uh, pop on... Uh, a new gearbox onto the car and yeah, potentially look at some, some of our engine parts around. I think it's generally okay and obviously Monaco you don't really need too much engine power anyway so might as well just keep with that but uh, gearbox wise we definitely need to make sure that we're Doing fine with that. Uh, 1.5 million will be Piastri's new contract. I don't think we're going to earn enough money to go and get somebody else. So I'm pretty happy with uh, Oscar Piastri. I think he's doing a good job so far. So we'll, we'll keep him around. Uh, yeah, last time out we finished 18th. So <laughs> weirdly there's a trend this season of we either finish 18th or finish in the points. So hopefully it's going to be... Uh, the ladder for this Grand Prix in, in Monaco and uh, looking forward to it. So uh, let's have a little look at R&D. We've, of course, got uh, four things already uh, up for development um, and none of them are going to be ready for Monaco. So let's just chuck in an, a new activity. What are we going to do? Power team building, maybe? Uh, yeah, let's go for that. And then let's get into the action of the Monaco Grand Prix and see how we get on in qualifying. Be on the car, ready for the next race weekend. Because qualifying, of course, is uh, basically 99% of the weekend. So here we go. Let's see how we get on. Well, here we come into the the first qualifying lap of the weekend for us, and it's a 1.14.0, which is slower than our practice time. Well, who knows whether we can do any better than that. Well, with three and a half minutes to go, we are pretty much propping up the rear. Uh, Nicholas Latifi is just behind us. Fernando Alonso and Kevin Magnussen, I believe, are out of the session. Um, certainly Fernando Alonso is. Kevin Magnussen is still out there. Um, oh, well, it does say DNF, so I'm not entirely sure what Magnussen's done. So we're not going to be starting at the back, but uh, boy, are we going to need a good lap if we are to get out of Q1. Well, here we come up to the line then. Six and a half tenths quicker, but I don't think it's going to be good enough, really. And, well, there you go. Oh, <laughs> well. Well, at least we got the lap in, I suppose. But uh, that is very much the end of our qualifying. We ran it all the way up to the line. 
Only made it one position and then couldn't get the car stopped straight into Sandavon. And, uh, well, we are out of qualifying. And uh, let's see where we qualify in the end. Wow, George Russell quickest in Q1. But, uh, yeah, 20th position, so slowest of all of the drivers. And, uh, well, Piastri nearly made it through to Q2. It's going to be a horrible race for us, isn't it? A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word, that's how Mr Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean. There's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. The astonishing Circuit de Monaco is, for all intents and purposes, virtually unchanged since its inaugural race back in 1929. The faster cars of today ensure the 19 corners past the casino and along the seafront remain as thrilling as ever. A 2.1 mile lap here takes us around an entire country, yet never more than inches from the race ending barriers. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Hamilton, Max Verstappen and Perez, Bottas, Norris, Mick Schumacher and Esteban Ocon, Ricardo, Gasly, Sebastian Vettel and Joe, Albon, Stroll, Oscar Piastri and Nicholas Latifi, Sonoda, the captain, Fernando Alonso and Kevin Magnussen fills the last spot on the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. It's just about time to go down to the track for the beginning of the race. But before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tyres, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. Here we are down on the track then, and it is going to be a really tough uh, Grand Prix for us, you feel. Um, yeah, I think just sort of matching the strategy of, of others is is going to be our best way here. Uh, yeah, we we got to go out there, we got to try our best, but uh, let's see how it goes. The two Ferraris leading the way, then the two Mercedes cars, the which is interesting. The gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. And it is an absolutely beautiful day here in Monaco. You can see there are four drivers on medium tyres going for the alternate strategy. Who knows? We're how almost this is ready to go. start the race as the cars take their positions on the grid, with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. So you're going through the swimming pool there, so still quite a, a, a way to go between now and the end of the formation lap. But uh, yeah, it's all going to be about survival this Grand Prix and just hoping for the best really that we, we can get something out of it and they all are lining up on the grid Ferrari there ready and waiting and here we come lining up for our first ever Monaco Grand Prix of F122 Lights out, away we go here in Monaco, straight away cover off Fernando Alonso, can we get a nice clean path into turn one? Yes we can, slight illegal overtake on Piastri but worked out well because uh, he got back past anyway, and now we just have to take it nice and easy through the casino. Oh, there's a big incident, and that's Oscar Piastri. 
Out of the race. Down the inside of Albon here, and we are through. Yeah, Piastri just got absolutely brake checked, okay, and, out of the race. It's been an on track and I don't really know how that's not a safety car, car incident, to, incident be to be honest. Okay, Oscar's dropped out of the race. Well, we survived lap one and sector one of lap two. Yeah, around here where Mirabel, I think it's called, isn't it? We're catching up to the rest of them. And this is going better than I thought, We, you know, but survival of the fittest, isn't it, Monaco? And I think especially on this 2022 game, because the AI are a little bit crazy sometimes. I can take you this lap. Well, we're going to come into the pits because uh, these tyre temp issues are just too great once again. And uh, it's been a real issue for us. No safety car just yet. But uh, hopefully we can come out and put in some good laps. And it looks like the pit crew are. are out in the lane and ready to perform their magic on the car. They're going to be aiming to achieve the fastest pit stop time possible. So you'd expect us to drop right to the back. I think there's an error with the removal of one of the front wheels. They're going to be disappointed with that. That doesn't really matter. Look Whoop. after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. Yep, so sonoda has gone through. We're okay. We're away. On these medium tyres. Now what we're hoping for is probably a safety car. At some point. To just bunch everybody back together. But... In all seriousness, I don't think we're going to achieve anything today. Unless there's a lot more retirements. Well, here we go. Are we going to manage to get ahead of Fernando Alonso? I think we just about have done. And there is Nicholas Latifi. So these are the guys that were racing today. Surely got more pace than Nicholas Latifi over. The car ahead's coming to fit the medium. Eleven laps. The car ahead now running medium tyres. Well, you join me on lap eleven of this Grand Prix. We're just over the halfway mark, and uh, Fernando Alonso has caught up to us. And well, it seems like we're about a second a lap slower than Nicholas Latifi. There goes Fernando Alonso around the outside of Sandovan. This is going to be close. Oh, we managed to just about stay in front for now, but that was very, very close. We'll stay with the action as we head up the hill towards the casino. We're just going through very cautiously at the moment. We don't want to make a mistake and give Fernando an easy route through. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to achieve much more than 19th place today. Other than if there's retirements. But if we can keep Fernando Alonso back, then that would uh, be a massive achievement. You can see already the amount of time that Nicholas Latifi has gained. front is 8.7 seconds. He's got a chance through Raskas and Anthony Knowles and coming on to the start finish straight. And also with the DRS this time. No, oh, he is having a look. The 
side pods have taken and I think damage. he's he probably lost a bit track. of his front wing. A little bit of contact there. And now we've got side pod damage. So we're going to be even slower. And yeah, got absolutely no grip. Now... Yeah, Fernando Alonso might be coming into the pits this lap, which might help us out. Who knows? Is he still there? Is he going to have a little go? It doesn't look like it. He's right in our gearbox. He is going to have a little go. Ooh, that was very, very close. Now as we come up to Raskas, we'll find out, did Fernando pick up any damage there? Yes he did. So Fernando Alonso into the pit lane. And that's the end of that battle. Which has probably been the only battle we've really had since the, the opening lap. So it's going to be another five laps of loneliness out there now but I wouldn't be surprised if Alonso catches us up before the end of the Grand Prix on those soft tyres somehow we're still managing to turn the corners but uh, I think for the second race in a row we are going to be lapped here because Charles Leclerc is uh, approaching us at a rate of knots right now he's uh, just about to come up to Sandavon and you would imagine after this lap he will probably be right behind us now we could have some fun and try and hold him up a little bit and make the race interesting but I'm not even sure we'll get that much of an opportunity if I'm completely honest with you especially now goodness me what on earth is going on at this Grand Prix? Uh, the, the car is... I mean, I think the, the tyre temps have gone up as well. There you go, that's... It's just ridiculous, isn't it? Confirmed. But I think we might be able to survive. There's Charles Leclerc behind. Uh, you know, I don't think we actually are feeling that much understeer. Oh! He says, oh dearie me. You have critical damage to the floor, be careful. Oh dear, well, yeah, now we're going to have to come in. So, Leclerc laps us, we've completely lost our front wing and... Oh, it's just been a disaster. It's one of those, isn't it? Blue flags now. Racing the car behind. Let them pass when you can. It's Danny Rick. I'm trying to let him pass, but he's <laughs> he's going to find it difficult. Go on. There you go. In contact with Sebastian Vettel. There's Max uh, Verstappen. Oh. Oh, wow, that was a catch. Well, I think, uh, I think this is the time. What a poor weekend. And, oh, I, yeah, I do not want to end up in Monaco again. <laughs> That was truly awful. That's it then for another nail-biting Monaco Grand Prix. We were on the edge of our seats the whole time, but they've come through to take a stunning victory. What do you think it was today, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. 
These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today, and a stunning win for Ferrari. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Charles Leclerc, currently leading the championship standings, extends his lead even further with this result. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver the of captain. the day? Charles Leclerc showed exactly how to manage yourself out on the track today. He was almost flawless out there. Incredible stuff. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari continue to extend the gap at the top of the table. There was also a strong showing from the McLaren team today as they make their way up the standings. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action, and I can't wait to see what's next. Well, there you have it then. Uh, a disaster in Monaco, really, but it looked like it was a fun battle up, uh, up front from uh, Leclerc and Sainz. Um, but yeah, we were just well off the pace. I mean, a 116 was our best time. And yeah, we were just nowhere near good enough uh, this weekend. But uh, yeah, uh, apologies. <laughs> These races obviously happen. An off weekend, that is for sure. Um, but hopefully we will be back stronger next time out in Baku. I am feeling confident ahead of that one uh, and looking forward to, to getting that going back with the 50% races of course so if you have enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up down below subscribe for plenty more f1 content and i hope you guys have a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye